let's add some navigation. Let's add some buttons here. And in the, we'll do that in the menu area. So we'll drop down the folder that has menu. And we'll add a new layer here by clicking the new layer button. And we'll make sure that that goes inside of the menu, maybe at the very bottom. Two clicks on it, and we'll name this buttons. And what we'll do is we'll create invisible an invisible button, and then we'll bring down multiple instances of that button so that we can use that four times for all four of these areas. Okay, so to do that, we'll start to build on the buttons area, and I'll hold down the Alt key and lock everything except for the buttons area so I don't accidentally write on any other layers here. Also, I just wanted to point out one thing here too, is that I added a, um, a ruler. I went into the view rulers so that I could drag out a guide so that I could see actually where the stage is since I'm working outside of the stage quite often here and I'll add that last one just to show you what that's like if I turn off all of the layers by clicking on the eye at the very top I can come over here to the ruler click and drag and I can put that right at the stage and now okay good enough for now and then we'll Turn the eyeballs back on, and that way I can see where the stage is. Okay. And actually, I'm going to just do a slight adjustment to that by going and grabbing the selection tool because I can see that it's a little off. I like to get things exactly right here. So if I zoom into it, now I can see I can make an adjustment to these guide layers. Click and drag them exactly right here. The top one needed to be adjusted as well to right there. Now I've got a nice guide there. And I can take a look at the other sides while I'm at this. So I'm just scrolling over to the other side. And I can see that I need to do a little adjustment there, too. Now I'll have a nice way of knowing exactly where the stage starts, even when there's content that's filling it up. Double-click on the hand tool to bring it all back, and then bring my eyes back on there again. OK, so here we go. So we're back to the buttons area. Everything's locked except for the buttons area with the buttons layer. And then when I'm working on this one, I'll go ahead and just grab the rectangle tool and grab a color and see, I can even use the fill color and sample from the nice sunset colors that we have here. Find what I like. Okay. And then I'll just go ahead and start from the very bottom so again, I'll zoom in here to get a little bit more precise. Okay. And I'm going to start right below the bar there. Drag out. And actually what I should do here is start with, I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to also turn off the stroke, because I don't want a stroke here is probably start with the picture since that's going to be the largest one that'll be a good one to use for my button the largest one because then when I reuse it over here and here I won't have any problems so I'll go ahead and recreate a rectangle and I'll go ahead and just drag it over pictures and that works and now that I've done that if I select this shape, I want to convert this to a button. So keyboard shortcut F8 is definitely the fastest way to do that. So click F8. And here we are and convert to symbol. And now I'm going to select button for the type. And this is going to be my reusable invisible button. So we'll just call it invis. And I'll click OK. OK. Now, I'll double click on it to edit this here. So I double click on it. And over here in the up, over, down, and hit is where I can start to really work with the uh, different ways this button interacts with the mouse. So I really don't want any, anything on the up because it's going to be an invisible button, like I said. So we're not going to see anything there. We're just when we mouse over, we'll see something. Um, and then we'll see something on the down state. So I'm going to take this and just click and drag it over to the over state. 
And then I'm going to duplicate it over here too. So I'm going to hit F6 on the down and F6 on the hit. Now on the hit area, I want to make this bigger, typically bigger than the area that it is. So the hit area is where the mouse will get triggered. And if I make it bigger, slightly bigger than it is now, that's going to be helpful for people to have this interact with the mouse. And it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and make it larger than, than this one, than the current one that's on here. So if I select this shape, and then I use the free transform, then we can just make this a little longer, a little wider. There we go. So now it's a little bit bigger. And then in the down state, if I look at that, okay, so there's the hit, there's the down. That's what it'll look like. This, this will just sort of be orange when at the down state. So as soon as I click, I'll see orange. And then over in the over state, maybe I just want a line. So I'm going to scroll this up. I'm going to just transform this up so we get just a little line right there above, which will indicate when I mouse over that this is the button that's active. So again, we've got nothing in the up state. The over state's just a bar above the text. The down state is when I click, we will see this flash of orange here. And the hit area is the area that defines what triggers the mouse, and it's a little bit larger. Okay, and we'll go back to scene one now. And you can see that it's got this cyan color, which indicates that it is a invisible button, that there's nothing on the, the first frame of the button, which is just what we want. Okay. The next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and duplicate this. I like to just hit the Alt key, and if I hit the Alt and Shift key at the same time, I can drag and, and make a copy of it and also keep it right at the same height. So there's one for the contact, and then again I'm holding the Alt and Shift key, and there's one for the About. Alt and Shift key, and there's one for the home. There we go. So now we've, we've created four instances of the button Invis, which we go to the library. We'll see there it is, the Invis button. And the next thing that we're going to do is program these buttons so that when we click them, that the playhead will go to the appropriate section. And we'll do that next.